Hi there, this is Solitude Ronan from Solitude Ronan Films and welcome to another double take. Today's double take is a couple of films starring Gian Maria Volonte, who I have recently um, binged on and I need to see more of his stuff. Again, grown up or just familiar with him in the spaghetti westerns, um, but he's much more varied than that. So, it's two DVDs um, by Raro Video that I need to get Blu-rays of if I can. Um, so the first one is Working Class Go to Paradise, or Lulu the Tool, um, directed by Elio Petri uh, from 1971. And Uo Mini Contro, or Men Against, or Many Wars Ago, Directed by Francesco Rossi, who obviously did Christ Stopped at Eboli with Volante, um, and this was made in 1970. I should say both prints are pretty good in these DVDs. Um, Umini Contro is available on Amazon Prime in the US, and I would urge you to check it out. There's also a Blu-ray, but it's quite hard to get, but I'm going to have to maybe try and get it. But we'll start with Lulu the Tool, or Working Class Goes to Paradise, um, by Petrie. So this is Volonte, perhaps a little bit more of the Volonte that we kind of recognise from these spaghetti westerns, a bit more combustible. He plays Lulu the Tool who works in a factory and he is essentially because it's piece work and you get paid for the number of widgets you make essentially you know at one point they do say the widgets we make or the things that we make just go on to another factory to be added to another thing that a bunch of factory workers make somewhere else um, but because he's so good at his job and he gets a rhythm going and his machine because um, he thinks of bottoms um, you know there's a wonderful it sets the scene wonderfully because there's a tannoy that's pretty much saying you and your machine are one and treat your machine well and it will treat you well um, but when the men in white coats and clipboards come round to see how productive everybody is Lulu is the guy that they get to come to other worker stations and say oh yeah you should really be doing that faster because Lulu is like the model worker as far as productivity so he has a bit of an antagonistic relationship with the other workers because he pretty much shows them up a bit but just because he's so good and meanwhile Outside of the factory every morning when they go in, which is just wonderfully shot, this big walkway in. You have the students and the unions demanding, you know, better pay, better conditions, and to, you know, piecework. And again, Volonte's character, Lulu, is kind of above this because he's just about making more money to help his family. Even though his family dynamic is a little bit interesting, he lives with a woman and her son, who's not his son. His son lives with his mother and another man. Um, so it's like fractured families. So, But he kind of stays out of politics. He's not really interested in politics until he has an accident on the machine. And then obviously he's not as productive as he was. His rates go down, he gets paid less. Um, there's two new workers um, who he trains, but you can kind of tell they're kind of almost moles sent in by um, 
the left wing to kind of rouse people up. Um, and then his perspective kind of changes on what he's doing there, um, why he's doing it, how you know the workers are essentially just pieces of machinery. Um, I don't think out of Petrie's films, I think this one is one that hasn't aged as well, perhaps. Just because of the political background, you have to take into consideration what was going on in Italy at the time. This is during the years of lead, as they called it. Um, it has a score by Morricone, and it's one of his more bombastic scores. It's one of his louder scores, just to get over the machinery noise, to get over the shouting. There is lots of shouting in this film, so if you're sensitive to lots of shouting, um, it's possibly not the film for you. Um, there's use of megaphones a lot, so it's a very loud, abrasive film as far as you know, factory noise, megaphones, people shouting, you know, there's three unions involved and they're all arguing with each other and then you have the more militant student factor um, who again are riling people up and winding people up. Um, Volante, of course, was very active politically. Um, he believed in socialism, so did Petrie. Um, People do say that they couldn't actually have conversations with Petrie because his political views and knowledge was just like so much more advanced than other people. Like he did have the nickname of Big Brain. Um, one because he had a somewhat large head, um, so obviously his brain was bigger. Um, but he did. He was really into politics and really engaged, as was Volante. So that's why they kind of worked well together, even though there was friction between the two, just because of their natures. Um, it is a wonderful film, but again, it's it's probably um, in Petrie's catalogue, maybe only a four, and that's saying something, because these other films that I've seen, I need to see more, obviously. He didn't make that many, sadly, because he died at age 53. Um, but this is more Volante, as we know him. He kind of starts off being, you know, kind of arrogant and really confident in his own abilities, but then as soon as he has the accident, um, obviously that changes as well, um, and he becomes more engaged with the political situation in the factory. You know, he does have some great speeches later on in the film. There's also a character who's in a mental asylum, who was essentially driven mad by the whole factory and you're just a piece and you know what are you actually doing with your life um, and those are wonderful scenes because um, again it goes into as a worker what are you working for and you are just essentially no different than a little bit of metal that you're putting a hole into essentially um, so there's a lot of really good stuff in it um, but again, it's a loud film, it's an abrasive film, um, it's not a comfortable watch, but it is um, another wonderful Volante performance who looks a little bit like Elvis with his, his sideburns. Um, but it's a really good Petrie film. I wouldn't say it's amongst his best, like Properties No Longer a Theft and Investigation of a Citizen Above Suspicion and The Tenth Victim. Um, I would say it's probably, I prefer it to a Quiet Place in the Country, with Franco Nero and Vanessa Redgrave, which again is good, but it's not right up there with Petrie's best. Um, but it's well worth a look. So then we get to Euro Mini Contro, or Men Against, or uh, Many Wars Ago. Now this one is definitely worth a look. Um, this is a masterpiece in my opinion. Um, it's set in World War One. It has some... It's trench warfare, the stupidity, just the slaughter. So there's, there's going to be comparisons to Pass of Glory. Um, obviously I love Pass of Glory. I've seen Pass of Glory countless times, 
I've only seen um, many wars ago once, but I think I actually prefer to pass the glory, and that's sacrilege. It's a stunning film. Um, it's directed by Frank Jesco Rossi, like I said. Um, there's a brief appearance by Daria Nicolodi, who would go on to appear in Argento films. She plays a nurse briefly. Um, Mark Frechette plays Lieutenant um, Sasu. Volante plays Lieutenant um, Otto Lenge. And Elaine Cooney gives a great performance as General Leone. And it's set um, with in the Alps, in the trenches, um, with Italy against um, Austria-Hungary and the stalemate that happened there for about three years. Um, I think Italy lost about 700,000 in World War One. Um, so it kind of starts with a deserter being found and being brought back to the troops um, and then it's just a parade of um, slaughter um, Lieutenant Sasu is the younger of the two lieutenants who are both well, Volante's character, Sasu eh, sorry, um, Otto Lenge is much more engaged from a political standpoint, again Rossi and Volante were both socialists as well, so again Volante, even though he's a lieutenant does kind of mention, you know we should actually be shooting our commanding officers and then shooting the Austrian commanding officers and actually trying to sort this out and at one point this he gives a, a great speech about you know let's end you know this war for poor people against poor people because um, it's actually at one point during the slaughter that the Austrians actually are shouting across um, no man's land at them just saying stop stop coming across because we're just like slaughtering you um, and of course the generals very much like in Passa Glory they're big on executing their own men shelling their own men shooting at their own men if they come back um, so it has there's a lot of crossover with Passa Glory um, again the character of General Leone could be really cartoonish but Elaine Cooney does give a really good performance yes this guy just believes in war you know there's a discussion later in the film Lieutenant Sasu about if you believe in peace you can't actually fight a good war um, and obviously Volante and Frechette's character you know don't love war strangely enough it's only these generals who are still kind of commanding under a code you know at one point they list something you know about punishing the soldiers who have rebelled or whatever um, and another officer says yeah but that rule was made like 1840 or something and the other guy's well it still stands you know 70 years later because they still had this belief that somehow soldiers running across no man's land against automatic weapons um, is still the way to go. Um, there's a wonderful scene with wire cutters where they send units out to cut the wire who just get mown down. Then they bring the cutters back, or surviving members bring the cutters back and they don't even work properly. Um, you know, World War One always does just fill you with anger just because of the absolute slaughterhouse that it was. Um, but again, it brings up a nice point about anti-war films. You know, there's only certain countries that make pro-war films. Um, but what difference do anti-war films really make? Um, anti-war films don't actually stop wars. Um, until armies, navies, air forces and marines actually say, you know what, we're not going to war. If you want to start a war send the politicians send the politicians out in no man's land in snow covered trenches 
to go fight the enemy with a spoon and a sharp stick and then we'll see how many wars we have um, again it's usually just poor people fighting poor people for the rich and again that's obviously a theme in this film as well and I'm sure that's why Rossi and Volante did it, it is based in a book um, there's so many wonderful moments in it there's a a slot where they look at the enemy trenches which is pretty much dialed in by a sniper and it's set up as you know they put cigarettes in the hole they put sticks in the hole and it's all always shot and at one point a character leads an officer to it um, and it's built up that's what's going to happen um, whether it does or not I'll let you watch the film um, there are opportunities where they want to kind of get rid of um, commanding officers just because they're being treated so terribly um, which again I think is real there's a moment where they're marching back in a retreat at one point and again they're just being mowed down by automatic machine guns and a scout you know, shout stop, and then it gets back to the general who's like, who shouted stop? Um, I want that man executed. You know, it's not his position to shout stop. It's like, even though we've been slaughtered. So Volante gets the job of executing him, um, which he's obviously hesitant to do, but he's like forced to do it. Um, but of course he goes and meets the guy who's like 21 and he asks him about his background so he just asks the soldiers to shoot up in the air and he just takes a corpse who's lying about back to the general to say that's him executed so in that early scene you can tell kind of what Volante's character is about you know at one point there's a rebellion amongst some of the platoons and Volante's crew is asked, you know, to come out and shoot them. Um, if it gets to that point and Volante refuses. Um, but again, it's like if you're going to turn guns on him, then he will do it, but not by choice. He's not going to like volunteer. Oh yeah, my guys will come out and shoot our own troops. Um, there's just so many great scenes. It looks beautiful. Um, again, it is an Amazon Prime in the US in HD, so if you can, I would highly urge you to check it out because for me it's an absolute masterpiece. Um, as completely opposite as Christ stopped at Eboli with Volante and Rossi, um, it's just full of so much stuff. The use of the countryside and the terrain is beautiful. Later on in the film, we get the snow in the winter, which obviously um, was a huge factor during the three years that this kind of stalemate went on for. Um, it has a wonderful ending, which I'm obviously not going to spoil. Um, it's just an absolutely tremendous film. It's only about 101 minutes or so. Um, but it absolutely flies by um, it's just wonderful Volante is a bit less Volante um, but he gives a wonderful performance um, Mark Frechette's fantastic as the kind of younger guy who learns over the course of the film what war is about um, and again the officers like General Leone who could be caricatures is another major character who's by the book and you know anybody who says no they've got to be executed um, again they could be really cartoonish but they're not um, even though you don't like the characters and you don't really understand them for what they're doing um, as far as they're concerned they know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it and it's perfectly reasonable that they would do that just because that's what's kind of drummed into them um, it's just a stunning film again I really need to watch more Rossi films 
Um, but I would highly recommend if you're going to watch one out of these two films. Also, I would recommend watching both. Um, but I would highly recommend um, Uo Mini Contro because it is just it's pretty amazing. Um, it is a sensational film. So thanks very much for watching this double take. Please let me know in the comments whether you've seen either of these two Volonte films and what you think of them um, and what are the Rossi and Petri films that I'm missing. Well, I know what Petri films I'm desperately trying to get hold of. Um, yeah, and like in the comments below. So thanks very much for watching. Mr. Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Sing farewell.